Hey guys, welcome to another edition of FSI's NFL Breakdown. This is TK Nation 47 here, uh, giving to you some turkey bowl picks for the Thanksgiving slate. Uh, fun slate every year. Uh, what's what's not better than drinking a cold one, watching some Thanksgiving Day football, eating some turkey, passing out by five, uh, lineups dead by one. It's it's great. I love it every year. It's a fun tilt, uh, but uh, I enjoy this slate. It's not often we get a three time uh three game prime time event uh you know with three different um start times so it's it's quite interesting uh from a uh, DraftKings perspective but yeah let's let's jump into it I'm just going to do a little bit of strategy tier by tier um uh you know quarterback running back and then some uh stacks maybe that you could do and some game theory on uh this slate which I think is the majority of this slate is ownership uh, because, you know, there's only three games to choose from. Most of the guys that get chalky, uh, you know, can be beaten by somebody better in the same, near the same price range. And I think that's ultimately our goal here is to get first place in these big prize pools. Um, so with that GPP type theory, and there is some cash theory to this, but you know, what we're here for is the big top prize. And uh, I think ownership plays a really huge part in this slate every year. Uh, real quick, if you could just please like this video and subscribe to our channel. Uh, it helps go a long way bringing to you the content we love to do. And, uh, you know, I appreciate all that you've already done for us. Uh, to all of those watching out there, thank you. And um, to those that are new to the shows, you know, welcome. Uh, but, yeah, okay. Picks time. Uh, quarterback. I'm kind of looking only at in two directions. I like this Houston-Detroit game. Highest total, 51 points. Uh, Detroit, a three-point underdog um, at home. Uh, this is this is like the Lions every year. They, you know, they throw a lot of, you know, Stafford just loves these Thanksgiving Day games. He throws, in, he throws a lot of touchdowns on Thanksgiving. Uh, doesn't necessarily equate to Lions winning. But uh, Stafford, uh, notorious uh, Thanksgiving Day smasher, uh, 5,800. He's getting a long discount uh, from Watson. But, you know, Watson at 7,400 does have five of the last seven games over 300 yards. He's getting Laramie Tunsil back. Uh, the Lions have no pass rush. I think both plays are good. What we're trying to figure out is which one outscores the other. And I think the rushing upside of Watson kind of brings us to... Um, him being the leading scorer on the slate. Uh, but just because he has, you know, 25 points and or 30 points and Stafford's 27, 28, you know, could, Stafford could still end up being in the optimal lineup uh, given how cheap he is at 5,800. So I think it makes him a better GBP play because I think he's going to get, you know, half of the ownership of Watson. I think everyone's going to have enough salary to plug in Watson at 7,400. Uh, you know, we don't have a running back over 7K on this slate. We don't have a, we don't have too many receivers over 7K and you don't necessarily have to pay up at tight end given how this year's played out with these tight ends and how low they have scored uh, collectively. So I think with that being said, people are going to just pay the 7-4 for Watson and that's going to leave players like Stafford and Ben Roethlisberger, uh, a little bit more under-owned. And I think that's where I'm going to live in my GPPs. Uh, you know, the Steelers uh, are just kind of hard to predict, uh, but there are so many pieces out for this Baltimore Ravens team. I think that makes Ben an interesting GPP play. Um, you know, he's going to be throwing to some of the best receivers in the game. I think, you know, we'll get to the stack portion of that later, but uh, for now... Those are my three quarterbacks. Watson, I uh, probably would make my cash quarterback because of the rushing upside, because of how well he's produced in the last, in the game since you know Bill O'Brien got fired. I think that would be a very safe, smart play in cash, and give me Ben Roethlisberger and Stafford, three touchdowns and two hundred eighty yards, and you're sitting around twenty five points. Um, it's ideal for a three-game slate, and I think that's the two quarterbacks that are capable of doing that, bringing Dalton and Alex Smith to the lowest-owned lowest portion because 
people think they suck. So they're not going to be higher owned than Stafford and Roethlisberger. People are going to take flyers and game stacks with those two quarterbacks rather than Dalton and Alex Smith, myself included. So, uh, yeah, Stafford, Ben, and Deshaun Watson. GVP plays mentioned. Uh, running back, Zeke Elliott, 6,800, seems very cheap. I know he hasn't been very good this year, but the matchup is really good. Uh, I do like running backs against Washington. Uh, we saw DeAndre Swift a couple weeks ago put up 16 rushes for 81 yards, five catches for 68 yards, and a touchdown. I kind of think that's Zeke's upside. Um, you know, he's going to get at least 15 to 20 cut touches. What he does with those is how far he's going to get, but I think that's going to be – I think that warrants some ownership from me. I don't think I'll be too high owned on it. I think, uh, you know, his – his production has been down this year, given the how far out the Cowboys are record-wise. I don't think they're trying to get Zeke hurt, and I don't think he's been the same since he got diagnosed with COVID. So, uh, hasn't been a good year for Zeke. I think people feel the same way. He could be maybe lower owned than DeAndre Swift, uh, but uh, 6800 is really cheap, and I'll have some shares. DeAndre Swift, uh, if he does clear concussion protocol, 6500 is really Decent price. Um, it's the worst team in the league versus running back. And the Houston Texans and Detroit, it's going to be a shootout. DeAndre Swift is going to get all the passing work. It really looked like the Detroit offense was completely lost without DeAndre Swift on the field. So if he is, if he is cleared and he is going to play, I think he's, he's going to get right back, the, right back to that bulk that he was getting before that concussion. Um, so I really like Swift. Definitely going to include him in some lineups with Stafford because he does catch balls out of the backfield. He's caught some receiving touchdowns this year. So I think that correlation in tournaments can really help set you apart because most people love to just play the running back or the quarterback with the wide receivers. So I love playing both Swift and Stafford in some lineups. Uh, on the other side of the – or into the next game at 4 o'clock, um, only one uh, – or yeah, the other side of the Zeke – uh, in Dallas Washington game, we have Gibson at 6K. Uh, last time we saw him versus Dallas in Week Seven, he went for 21, 128 yards and a touchdown, uh, and he scored in four straight games. So uh, I don't know if he, it's hard to say he's living on the touchdowns uh, when he does have some decently high rushing yard games. It's just he doesn't have any of the passing work because of my guy JD McKissick at 5100. Um, he only had seven points in the last time out versus Dallas. In the first match, uh, only nine points last week. But in the two times, in the two games in between those two games, he's had 17 points in each of those with 15 and 14 targets. If by some chance Dallas gets up big and Washington's playing from behind, you're going to get more J.D. McKissick than a Antonio Gibson. So in game stack theory, if you're playing Zeke Elliott and, you know, maybe like an Amari Cooper, Zeke Elliott stack, and then you're going to run it back with McKissick and McLaurin, and, you know, you could still play your, your quarterback in a different spot. But that kind of game stack projects Zeke and Cooper scoring touchdowns early, and then Washington have to play catch up with McKissick and McLaurin. That's my favorite route in game stacks for this game. Uh, because I will have game stacks for each game. Um, but And then you're going to flip side that with Gibson and maybe Washington D and just complete route, and then you just game stack something else, and you just think, okay, Washington's D is going to shut Dallas down, and Gibson's going to run for 150 in a touchdown, and that's the game. So those are the kind of game theories um, I'll be mixing with in this matchup. I think McLaurin, you can play a standalone no matter what. He's probably the best player on the slate, and he's probably going to be first to 1,000 yards on the year uh, during this game. Uh, so, yeah, I'll just transition that right into wide receiver, tight end, and game stacks. Uh, so my only receiver for the Washington or yeah, Washington football team, uh, I'll take Terry McLaurin. Um, this Detroit-Houston game. I think Fuller Cooks and uh, Kiki Kuyat, uh, Kiatu, uh, Kuti, I can't pronounce it. Um, Kiki, uh, if Stills is out, it makes for a player uh, an interesting one game 
kind of play for showdown slates. Uh, Jordan Aikens is a tight end for the Houston Texans that I like as well. Uh, but my main focus will be Fuller and Cooks. I think the other two games, uh, other two players are showdown only. Uh, uh, I don't mind. Uh, on the other side of the ball, Hawkinson and Marvin Jones. Those would be my two favorite plays. On the Detroit side, uh, I think anything else is kind of getting too cute. Um, Miguel Sano, or Mohamed Sano, did play 27% of the snaps last week. If basically everyone's out for Detroit, you could look to him or Quintez Cephas maybe. Uh, but yeah, for this, for this game... Uh, give me Fuller and Cooks with Watson, Hawkinson and Jones with Stafford, and not try to get too cute. Maybe get cute in the Dallas and uh, Pittsburgh side of things. Uh, so with that being said, uh, yeah, I'm not really much interested in Dallas wide receivers, but if I had to pick one, I would pick Amari Cooper. And I kind of like Dalton Schultz. I think he's going to be my favorite tight end play of the slate. Um, Andy was Andy had those years with Tyler Eifert in Cincinnati, and that's he threw to Eifert all the time in the red zone. I think he's going to do that with Dalton Schultz. I seen him do it last game versus Minnesota. I th I'm going to be pretty high on Dalton Schultz as my salary saving tight end this week, and. Uh, the Washington football team gives up the 11th most points to the tight end position as well. So my Cowboy exposure is probably going to be a lot of Zeke, maybe some Amari, and then Dalton Schultz. And I think that'll be good for Dallas. And then most of my Washington exposure will be, you know, Gibson, Washington D, or maybe even McKissick and McLaurin. So I like, I like mixing and matching like that. Um, my too cute play of the Turkey Bowl special will probably be Willie Sneed. Um, I'm, I'm hoping this is going to be a too cute play and that the industry won't be following suit. Seven targets in three straight games. Went five, five catches for 106 yards last time out against the Steelers. Um, since Nick Boyle went down, this, you know, the Washington or the Baltimore Ravens have been um, running a lot of more open sets and, uh, Des Bryant is their wide receiver three. I, I, he's not going to get open. Marquise Brown is just completely lost out there. And Pittsburgh's one of the best teams against the tight end position. So I don't. I think they'll just kind of box Mark, you know, Andrews. And that's going to leave a lot of Willie Sneed open on the outside. And if hopefully Jackson can hit him a couple of times. But... Uh, yeah, Snead will be my cheap wide receiver play. I'd probably play too much of. <laughs> and for Pittsburgh, I'm going to be fading Juju Smith-Schuster. I don't play anyone versus Marlon Humphrey. That's just that. Uh, Claypool does get, you know, the he has the air yard share for the Pittsburgh Steelers. He gets those jet sweeps. He gets play designs for him. I will play Claypool and not worry about where he's lined up on the field because he is designed to get the ball. So uh, Deontay Johnson is the best play and my favorite play in this, in this uh, Pittsburgh game. He does, he's getting a consistent wide receiver one volume. So I will have him and I don't mind his matchup. I'm not sure if Jimmy Smith is playing uh, defenses in order. I rank them um, Washington, Dallas and Pittsburgh. Uh, so yeah, that'll do it. Um, as always guys, please like, and subscribe to the video. Uh, get get into the Discord channel. Uh, it should be a fun day. Uh, I don't have nothing to do. Unfortunately, COVID here in Ohio is kind of taking over, so I can't see my family. So keep me company and bug me in the in the Discord channel, and let's watch some football together. And let's have a good Thanksgiving. All right, everyone, take care.